Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. So excited to have you here today. I've been playing with Swift UI and I thought what better way to get a feel for how Swift UI works than to actually take an existing UI kit app and convert it into Swift UI. If you want to see what that's like and share in some of my learnings, come on in and let's see what it's like to convert a UI kit app into one that's driven by Swift UI. Okay, so let's just start off by demoing what the app actually does. So here is Weathery. This is a nice little weather app that I use in some of the courses I teach where basically you can come in here and type return and it will search up and go to the internet and fetch the weather. So we've got a thundery day here in Calgary. Let's head over to Tokyo. Oh, looks like they've got some rain there. What's going on in Stockholm E-Dog? Ah, sun, very nice. So you can see you basically type in the city up here. It goes out to the internet and fetches the weather and then it updates controls on your screen. Now let's just take a look at this sort of in three steps. One, let's see what it's like to convert it and look at Swift UI from the UI perspective. Then we'll look at something called data flow. And then finally we'll touch on networking. So this is a traditional UI kit application built with auto layout, protocol delegate, URL session, all the good stuff we typically use when building UI kit applications. And we have protocols. When we hit return here and grab the city, we go and fetch the weather. It does this request where it goes out to the internet. And then basically just as a callback via the protocol delegate back to this view controller and updates the controls here. Very, very standard UI kit stuff. Here's just a, some sample of how the layout works. And of course, in UI kit, we use auto layout. So here you'll notice we just built this with a series of stacks, good old UI stack view. We've got a root stack here, which controls all, which contains all the elements. We then have a search stack here going this way, where we basically just say, we add our controls in here. And this is very typical of how you would programmatically build out a UI kit using good old auto layout. Now where Swift UI is a little bit different is we have no auto layout. That's right, auto layout's gone. We use these things called H stacks, V stacks, spacers, and padding. So when we take our UI kit application, we've got to change, we don't have to change the layout, we have to change the mechanics for how the layout is drawn. And we're going to do that by using something called an H stack along the top here. That's where we're going to put these buttons in the text field. These, that stack and these other elements are going to be contained in something called a V stack, which is going to go vertically up and down here. And the way we're going to get all these controls to shift up is we're going to add something called a spacer here, which is going to fill the available space. So let's go now and take a look at a demo and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here I have a brand new Xcode application. This is a Swift UI app out of the box. I've added one image, which we're gonna see as a background. But what you see over here is basically the new Swift UI previews. This is one of the big advantages of Swift UI. Now we're gonna actually be able to preview and see our code as we type it out. So you can see here as we start, we get a text field with hello world in the middle. And this is where we're gonna design our Weatherly app. So for example, I could come in here and I could add an image and I will immediately see that over here on the right hand side. Now note how many defaults are used in Swift UI. Look at this, we get our image centered right in the middle of the view and we didn't have to do anything. All we had to do was type image, give it a system image and it laid it out for us. Now you might be wondering, where's the view controller? Well, there is no view controller in Swift UI. That's a big change. Now all of our logic is gonna be embedded directly in these structs, in this case, one called content view, and we're gonna do all of our UI logic right in these views. So no view controller. Also note how I'm using this word frame here. Frame used to be a really dirty word for me in UI kit land, because in the auto layout, we typically don't like to hard code or use the frame when we're laying things out. But frame is perfectly okay here. Here we're taking an image, making it resizable, giving it an aspect ratio fit, which you might remember from UI kit, and we're giving it a size of 44 by 44. Now this is where we're gonna build out our Swift UI app and watch how we use stacks and spacers to do that. 
So first we can come in here and go ahead and add something called a horizontal stack or an H stack. What that's going to do is that's going to enable us to build or lay out controls horizontally going across the screen. Now I've only got one control in there, so that's why you only see one. But watch what happens as I add more. We're going to add in a text field. We're going to add in another image. And I'm going to reload my view here. And we'll see that it's compiling right now. It's going to update my auto-generated Swift UI here. And it keeps failing. It should eventually work. And boom, there we go. We now have an H stack going across the screen with our controls added. Very, very nice. Let's continue the journey. Let's see what else we can add here. Let's stick that in something called a V stack. So now we're vertically going to want to add some things vertically into our UI, but I want to push that H stack to the top. So how do we do that? Well, here we use something called a spacer. I'm going to add this spacer. That's going to push everything to the top. So the spacer is this whole area in here. That's what pushed it to the top. And then I'm just going to add some nice default padding. And voila, we now have a very basic, simple UI. But that's kind of the feel for how the Swift UI stuff works. You work directly in your view. You see results over here. And we use these things for layout called HDAC, VStack, and spacers. Now, if we continue this journey, we can continue laying out our UI, adding things like background images, making things kind of, you know, come to life, adding them one at a time. We can do some refactorings, add some other code, and eventually we will get a fully rendered UI for what we want. So a couple things we did in there. One, we added a background image behind our VStack just like this. This is an image I've already added to my asset catalog, which is being displayed. You'll also note that Swift UI loves to work with structs and lots of little subviews. So look at how this is laid out. This is our main body here in our content view. We've got a VStack, but then we've got our search view, this guy at the top. We've added a weather view, this sun here, a temperature view down here. And all of these are little structs or little views that we just use and compose into our parent view. Very, very cool. I did a little refactoring down here on image. I added an extension called size, small, medium, large, because I didn't want to retype this stuff all the time. I could come in here and just, you know, lay it out like that. But that's basically how we can go about using uh, Swift UI to really nicely build our views and really, really elegant and get an immediate feedback right here as we're building it in our UI. All right, let's shift gears now and talk about data flow. Okay, data flow for me was perhaps one of the most confusing things to understand when I first got into Swift UI. Because like you, I was really used to UI kit communication patterns. I mean, we have these nice things called protocol delegates, model view controllers, notification center, ad hoc callbacks and closures. Like we had great communication patterns in UI kit, but something fundamentally changes in Swift UI. And that is that Swift UI views are now completely data or state driven. And this takes a while to get your head wrapped around, at least it did for me. Let's take a look at an example and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here I'm flipping to the fully complete rendered app, and I just want to show you how Dataflow works because this really blew my mind and it was really, really complicated, at least I thought, but once you see the fundamentals, it's not that bad. We are going to go out and make a call and fetch the weather. And to do that and to parse that in JSON, we need a weather model object. So this is the object I use in the app to basically take the JSON data coming in and then use that to populate my view. Standard struct with some very simple constructs in there. Now, the big thing that you'll hear when you get into Swift UI is Combine. I have a video on Combine, which you can check down in the show notes, but this is basically the event, stream of event framework that Swift UI uses behind the scenes to dynamically publish and send events out into the app, which your views subscribe to so they can update themselves. And these are really fundamentally defined by these things called property wrappers, which is why you'll see tons of things like this 
state object with this little ampersand sign all over the place in Swift UI. These property wrappers are how Swift UI uses Combine to define a single source of truth in the app, in this case, weather. And what we're going to do is we're going to define something called an observable object, which is going to contain our weather model, that thing up there that we saw at the top. And we're going to broadcast or notify whoever is interested in the app whenever our weather changes. And views that are listening or bound to that weather store observable object are going to be notified and they're going to be able to update themselves. For example, Weather view depends upon this attribute called condition name up here in our weather model. This is what's going to determine what image we show up here. These are all uh, system images built right into the uh, right, built right into iOS. We're going to update that image based on what the weather sends us. And so we basically make that a binding condition or we use we send that data into the weather view by passing in the store weather model condition name. So when we go take a look at weather down here, this weather view, here's condition name. We pass that in and this view will re-render itself every time a uh, condition name changes. Or in our search view, for example, if we come back here, uh, sorry, let's go look at temperature view. Here's a simple, nice little temperature view. It's going to depend on the temperature from our weather model. So if we go down and take a look at that, Here's temperature. This is just a struct, which depends on temperature. And here's how we're going to lay out the temperature here along with degrees Celsius. So we've got these sub views, which are all built and composed in our parent view, but we're going to define an observable piece of data down here, which is going to update all those sub views when things change. Now you might be wondering, well, what's going to do the updating or when we fetch the weather, how do we pass that down? Well, for that, Next, let's take a look and compare how networking works from UIKit to SwiftUI. Okay, so the difference in networking mechanically isn't that great. We're still going to make the same URL session calls. We're still going to fetch stuff the same way. What's different is how we do the updates. In UIKit, we can use URL session and standard JSON encoding to go out there, fetch the weather from our URL. And then in this case, with UIKit, we were sending the new weather back via the protocol delegate. In this case, I'm just showing what an error looks like, but it would basically be the same thing. We would go did fetch weather, pass back our weather model, and that's what would update the UI. Now in Swift UI, of course, this is different. We don't have a protocol here. In Swift UI, we're going to be in our search view and we're going to do the fetch there. And once we get our new weather model fetched out from the web, parsed and returned as JSON, we're going to go to that store object I was talking about earlier, set the weather model on it and vroom, magic, everything's just going to be updated automatically. Let me show you what that looks like in the code. Okay, so here we are in our search view. We depend on the weather store. We pass that in, or we actually get that automatically as being part of this view. And then look at on text field here. When someone presses enter, it's through this on commit that we're gonna go ahead and fetch the weather, passing in the city name. So down here is fetch weather. We're gonna just do some encoding to build up the URL we need to go fetch the weather, and then we're gonna perform the request. Now this is all just standard NS URL data task stuff. We've got a URL, check for an error, we fetch it, we JSON decode it, which is gonna come back to us as weather data. That's what we defined uh, up here, whoops, up here at the top. And this is just some stuff we're gonna basically extract and use when we do our decoding. And then down here, we're gonna use that to create our weather model object. And this is where the magic happens right here by going to our store on our weather model and setting it because this is a bound observable object which we defined way up here in our content view here every sub view who's also bound to that is automatically going to get updated which is really really cool now something you may not know in swift ui is you can actually run your app right in the preview here by hitting this blue button 
So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in uh, Calgary and hit enter. And I'm not even running the app in the simulator. I'm running it right in the view. This is also something that's really cool. And as soon as I did that, it went out, fetched the weather and updated all these elements of the UI. Really, really cool. So this is just a nice way you can even test your app in Swift UI without requiring a simulator. And that in a nutshell is how data flow and networking work at a very high level in Swift UI. Okay, so what are some key learnings when converting from a UI kit into a Swift UI app? Well, I wrote down a few of my learnings like this. One, the biggest difference, no auto layout. That's obviously gone. There's no more view controllers, lots of little views, lots of those little structs we were looking at. I think the biggest productivity improvement is gonna be that real time feedback. You can actually see what your view looks like as you're building it in those Swift UI views. Lots of default with regards to layout and spacing. I was amazed at how spaced and well everything looked without me having to explicitly set and manually pad and size everything. Views are completely data driven. This is the biggest shift for me. The fact that now your views rely on data from a high level, conceptually it's very easy to understand, but I found the data flow very, very confusing. That took a long time for me to wrap my head around. And I'm gonna do an upcoming video purely on data flow because I think it's, it's worthy of a subject in itself. But the result was way less code, which I absolutely loved. Not much code went into that entire application, much less with UIKit. So overall, I think a big thumbs up. I'm really enjoying Swift UI. I'm really enjoying exploring it. I still know almost nothing about it, but I'm getting there. And I think this is a really good exercise, just taking an existing app, which you know, and converting it into Swift UI. Okay, so there you have it, folks. One simple conversion of UIKit into Swift UI. I really think this is a good exercise to go through if you wanna play with Swift UI. Uh, don't get me wrong. I've been looking at Swift UI for a month and it took me about a month of pretty regular study just to get to this point. There's a lot to learn. It is very different, but I think once you get your head wrapped around the fundamentals, which is all I'm trying to do at this point, uh, things will get hopefully more clear. I haven't built a non-trivial app in Swift UI yet. That's something I'd like to do coming up. But hopefully just by seeing some of the mechanics of what it's like going from UI kit to Swift UI, at least you've got a taste of what it's like what you can expect and I think with this latest WWDC round that came out SwiftUI is just leveled up again and it's getting more and more close to something production ready which while I'm not seeing right now in my current job I expect I will probably within a year uh, some of you might already be using it already in real apps out there so that's why I'm digging into it uh, if you want to join me and continue learning SwiftUI do hit like do hit subscribe we'll continue exploring and getting into data flow because that's the one I found really confusing and we'll figure this out together okay thanks for coming everyone we'll see you next time bye bye